Hi, it's Fiona Flynn here and I'm at the Board Gosh Energy Theatre chatting to Kevin Kennedy who is starring in their musical Rock of Ages all this week. Kevin though will be known to many of you as the iconic Curly Watts from Coronation Street. Kevin, it's so lovely to meet you. Lovely to um, meet you I grew too. up watching you on television as the right. iconic Curly Watts, yeah. um, which I'm sure maybe you're, you could be sick of people talking about it now. I hope no. you're not, because no. he's probably, in my mind, one of the loveliest soap characters, or the most tortured soap characters, maybe yeah. in so many ways, um, that ever went. Um, how, what was it like to play a character like that for 20 years? Well, my job as Curly in the in the ca that kind of period from the 80s through the 90s was to make everyone else feel better about themselves. I think, you know, I've you got... You were the fall guy. Yeah, they were like, you know, I sat at home, it was austerity and whatever, and we go, I've got a terrible job, I hate my job, I've got no girlfriend, I look terrible, but at least I'm not him. So that was my gig for the... <laughs> but no, it, it was lovely to play, yeah, and, and I'm very, very proud of it. And I'm never tired of talking about him, because... Good, yeah. Uh, I, I don't understand that when actors sort of go, oh, I don't want to talk about it. I, I, I don't know, I don't talk about that anymore. I don't understand that because um, when I'm what, especially the streets of Dublin or indeed anywhere, people come up to me and say, ah, oh, I remember you. For, and it's linked in with stuff from their life. Right? They remember, Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Oh, I remember you when I got married and I, you were on the, t and so it, it's, uh, it's a privilege, you know, it's an honor. So, yeah, and yeah. that's the way I look at it. And, uh, and you know, to, for, uh, I, I don't know, we're in the job of, of telling stories and, and if people can remember the stories that you told to them on the telly 20 years ago, or whatever it is now, 13 years, I think, then that's, that's brilliant, isn't yeah. it? That's, what, that's why we do it. And you were a part of probably some of the most memorable storylines yeah. at that time. Yeah. I mean, your time with Jack and Vera, yeah. your great relationship with Reg Holdsworth, yeah. and of course, your marriage to Raquel, which yeah. brought in, your wedding to Raquel brought in like 22 million viewers yeah. at the time. I mean, yeah. it was huge. Uh, it was amazing. I was very lucky, the writers. Yeah, well, you got, they gave you, and of course, your memorable encounter with the Battersby's. Uh, I always we, remember was, that when you threw the... I got it all, but I got yeah. all the great comedy stuff that me and Reg did, which I have to say was some of the funniest stuff on the telly at the time. It really was. It was a great double yeah, act. Yeah, it was lots of fun and, and, and just mayhem. And then I played the, you know, I got to play the romantic lead, somewhat downtrodden with the fair Raquel. Uh, Sarah Lancashire, Sarah of course. Lancashire. Yeah. She's, she's done nothing since she's... Yeah. She, <laughs> I haven't heard sight nor sound of her. No, I don't know what she's doing now. <laughs> uh, a beautiful girl, beautiful actress and yeah, uh, a good friend. Actress. Yeah, fantastic actress. Yeah, I'm good friend. I'm, I'm only joking, Raquel, you know, <laughs> Sarah, so I should say. And um, yeah, so I got to play lots of different stuff, you know, yeah. and, and it was great. And what would be a standout storyline for you? Or is there well, anyone that you really look back on and go, oh, that was... My, one of my favourites, I mean, we had the big blockbuster stuff with the mm. wedding and stuff. But what I have to say, one of my favourites was was the Reg wig story. It was when Reg got a wig. Yes, I remember this. Because it was only little. It, was, it wasn't was a, a huge yeah. story. It was only about six or seven episodes, but it, it had a beginning and a middle and an end. And then it was forgotten about, you know, Reg wore a wig. And it was just really funny. Yeah, it was follically yeah. challenged and it, it was just great fun. Yeah, and are you in touch with the um, actors that you yes, worked with? Yes, I was up in Manchester. We opened the show Rock of Ages in Manchester and the cast came along to see it as really? they do with That's all the support network oh, the cast yeah it's great yeah. yeah i mean we you know everything i do up there they come and see and that's that's just and it's not just cast it's crew as well because i grew up with them we were there for swear for 20 years yeah uh, yeah God, 20 years yeah, yeah. so they Long come time. up with the, when we did the commitments they came up to see it yes and, uh, two years ago wasn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah two years ago to this week. Really? It was here, yeah. Yeah, it was in Borgash as well. Yeah. Um, now, this is kind of a funny time in Soapland as well, in that they are pulling in a lot of characters yeah. from about 20 years ago. You know, we've got Kim Tate and Emmerdale, yeah. Mel Owen and EastEnders. Could we possibly <laughs> maybe see Curly Watts back on the cobbles? You know, I never know. Uh, you don't know, do you? I mean, I have a, a great relationship with ITV yeah. uh, and a great relationship with, with Coronation Street. and. Um, you never say never. I mean, I've told them, you know, as I said before, you know, we're in the, the, the business of telling stories and I do think that Curly would have a, a bit of a tale to tell if he came back, so. And he has, I mean, he's a 17 year old son now, so he'll be coming right. back with family. And a know? daughter. And a daughter from with, with Kel, yeah, isn't who it? Lives yeah. in, who lives in... Kuala Lumpur. No, I think they still live in France. Oh, really? Yeah, in ah. a chateau. Oh, very nice. So, who knows? Who and how knows? would you imagine Curly being written back in? Or is there any kind of ideal situation? Well, would he still be sort of like the street kind of I don't fall know. guy? I mean, I've, I've, as I've said, you know, uh, the writers, the, them, yeah. they gave me some brilliant stories. So, you know, I don't want to jinx that. Yeah. You know, if they come up with something, and then, then it's the chances are it's going to be very good. So. Yeah. Well, I think we should start the campaign now. Oh, on. thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Now, as well as Kari, um, I was reading that you were also um, part of Johnny Marr's first band. Yeah, I was. Which is sort of, I mean, I guess you were in Manchester in that scene at the time. That's where you grew up. Um, the first band was called uh, Paris Valentinos yeah. with Johnny Marr and Andy Rourke. Yeah. And I know you're a teenager at the time, but what was that like? Well, it, 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 it was a very odd one. I mean, it was 1976 around there and punk had just exploded. Yes, yeah. So. And it was a true revolution in, in the form that if you wanted to get up and do something, you could do it. And the local news programme, you put it on on an even, of an evening, and you'd see your, your friends either doing poetry or sculpting or acting or music. So, you know, if, if you wanted to get out and do it, you could do it. That was the whole point of punk. Mm. Um, and it became more accessible that you could get gigs and things like that. So everyone was at it and it was great. And, uh, so we were 14, Johnny yeah. and I were 14, and uh, we used to and play... how did you know each other? Well, we used to play the local folk mass. See, good oh, Catholic really? lads, you see. <laughs> good Catholic lads. And the, the, the deal was the priest let us play, let us rehearse in his hall if we played the folk mass. Right. So that was the deal. Yeah. Um, so me and Johnny just played the folk mass, and then we formed this band. And it was, as I say, we were 14, it was a social thing, and, um, and, and it was great. And I'm, I'm very pleased to say that when Johnny wrote these autobiography that there was there was plenty of mentions in there yeah yeah uh, and he put s somewhat more importance on it than i did which i thought was, was really flattering yeah, yeah absolutely and, and when i saw johnny play guitar for the first time and we sat in his bedroom and you know i knew then you know i knew that i was privileged to see to see this yeah for the first time you know before anyone else yeah. I saw him playing, I think. You know, he was only 14 as well at that yeah, point. Oh, yeah, he was a God, brilliant that was such a player. raw talent there yeah. from the beginning. And I was like, you know, which kind of, um, that sort of changed my mind about, mm, do I really want to, if I have to be that good, <laughs> maybe I better do something else. It was unfortunate you were around someone who set the bar so yeah. high, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I still went on to, to do a lot of music. Yeah, you, know. you were also, you toured Ireland uh, back at the height of your Kari fame mm, with yeah. this show band group called Borderline. Yeah. How did that come about? Well, I wanted to keep playing, you know, hmm. and um, I was in uh, Coronation Street and <clears throat> I hated the music at the time. I hated Stock Aikman and Walkman. I could not stand it. And I thought, what am I going to, you know, I can't listen to it. And while my, some of my uh, compadres were being sort of thrown out of string fellows, what have you, I just wanted to, to play. And hmm. the only circuit that was going was the Irish music circuit in Manchester. Uh, which was huge. Mm. You know? So I joined a, um, uh, the Borderline uh, as a bass player, kind of anonymous. It was never billed as uh, Curly Watts and the Borderline. It was just the Borderline. And it's mm. kind of a big sort of Mancunian secret. Uh, and, and it was great. And I learned to play live and I learned to, to w see what an audience was like and, and, and I played the bass with them and that was great. And then that led to being uh, later on, I formed another band called The Bunch of Thieves, which was where we played um, Reading Festival and the NEC. And then after that, I got signed by Simon Cowell. Uh, and, and then I got signed by Warner Brothers and I got a, uh, a gold album. And then I went to America and I played in, in Morgan Freeman's Blues Club in Mississippi. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, it was cool. and then I went to Memphis and, uh, and I played in Nashville. Uh, um, and then I played, my, the biggest one was I played at um, the uh, Ar Arkansas or Arkansas Riverfest yeah, yeah. Uh, in Little Rock. And I was on the bill with uh, Steve Earle, uh, Hank Williams Jr. Uh, and B.B. King. Uh, and that was, that was it was guys. it was yeah. great. You know. <laughs> That's incredible. Like, wow, wow, this is good. Can I tell you some stories to tell? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and because uh, a lot of this is to do with sobriety as well. When I got sober, they said, you know, you can do whatever you want as long as you don't drink. And I went right. I will. That's so. it. I will. Yeah, yeah. And Kevin, you have a lot of family in Dublin and uh -huh. Ireland. I think yeah. uh, your mum is just from up the road here. My mum was born in Foley Street, which is just over there. Yeah, I think. not far from Borgosh area. Yeah. 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 Um, and all my family, of course, she was from a big family and yeah. s some stayed here, some went to England and they all stayed up there. Uh, they all came down to see me yesterday and we had a lovely, lovely dinner and told stories and laughed and yeah, ate yeah. a lot and it was great. And yeah. they're very supportive and they come and see the shows that I do. And I'm very, I'm very proud of my, uh, my Irish roots because I think uh, it's, part, it's in the genes of, as I say, about storytelling. It's, it comes from 
from from our Irish roots, and not just me, people like Johnny Marr, Andy Rourke, and the rest yeah, of us, all from yeah. Mancun and the Gallagher brothers. Of course, you yeah, know, it's a Mancunian kind well. of Irish yeah. uh, storytelling gene, yeah. which we've all got, I'm very thankful for. And speaking of stories, tell us about your role in um, Rock of Ages. Uh, well, Rock of Ages mm. is, is it's it's only designed for one thing, and that's for the audience to have the best time possible. Yeah. Uh, it's not Shakespeare, it's not Pinter, um, it's not Brecht, it's just fun. It's a bit rude. Oh yeah? A bit rude, a bit risky. <laughs> it's your uh, one arm. <laughs> uh, that's no problem, and, uh, but great music. And yeah. I play Dennis Dupree, who is um, um, a terrible alcoholic drug addict. In fact, in the show, I get to do all the things that I used to do. Um, <laughs> Relive the dark days. I relive the dark, but he is a heart of gold, and uh, he runs his club in Los Angeles in uh, in the eighties, and it's one of those stories where uh, I'm sure Dublin, like Bad Bobs, you know, like Bad Bobs, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. And Bad Bobs was the place to go, and then the then the, the council decided to shut it, right? Mm. Well, Dennis runs a kind of Bad Bobs, but it was the starting point for all the big bands, the rock bands, yeah. and the council wants to shut it down, the mayor wants to shut it down, and. There's a love story in there as well, and it's a story about how they save the LA bad bobs, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, and how they save that, and there's the love story that all comes to fruition in 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 the in the club. Great. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Good. And perhaps, fingers crossed, maybe your face back on the cobbles someday. You never soon. know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. And you. Thank you. Thank you.